Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. A general reminder for those who do not know, MIC is having a one-year anniversary event where Bao is going to be trading live in front of our members. It's coming up August 17th. Mark your calendars. As an added benefit for our members, the event is 100% and exclusively free for annual and lifetime members. While lifetime, on top of that, get extra coaching before the event and guaranteed front row seating. While most charge for these events, we show our support by making it, again, free for annual and lifetime members. If you are interested in signing up for this event, DM TBradley90 in MIC Slack chat and or email myself at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Now, we have a very special video for you guys this week as Austin, who goes by Aloha Trader, does a member webinar every single Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is going to be episode nine, where he talks about conviction and data tracking tutorial with our other head moderator, Joseph Kelly. And while today is just a preview of the almost two and a half hour webinar, if you want to watch the full length video or any of our exclusive content, then become an MIC member. Um, this one's going to be a special one, guys. We got Joe um, as a guest speaker this time. Still going to give everyone the normal five minutes to be late, um, and then we'll get started. Uh, yeah, I'm going to conviction is going to be the uh, the theme of this webinar. So, um, a lot of people have you know questions like how do I be convicted? What's the difference between being convicted and being stubborn? Right? Like we're going to go over all that at the end. But first, um, let's go through the lineup. All right, so today, um, uh, if this is your first webinar, I usually do an order of operations for all of the webinars. Um, what we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna go through key, key traders of the week, um, normally stocks that I've traded, but every now and then I'll throw something that I didn't trade, but just something that I kinda wanna go over and highlight maybe key important parts about the trade because other people trade stuff that I don't. So I still think it's beneficial. I, I, I'll go over the weekly uh, market sentiment, where I feel the market's at um, as far as like um, bullish, bearish, kind of stagnating. Uh, let's do it. All right, so key traders. So Fran, I'm, I'm just going to go over this one. I totally missed Fran. It was a great short opportunity, and I just totally missed the move. The, the reason why I avoided this was because it was a real company, right? Like this is, this is an actual company with like stores out there. Um, and so I, I tried to be extra cautious a little bit with this thing. I kept wanting it a little bit higher, like we tanked and I kind of wanted to push to five and we didn't get it. And then we tanked here. I wanted to push the VWAP and we never got it. And like, just, I, I just couldn't keep chasing. Right. I, but I'm not really unhappy that I missed because there's so many parts of this, um, trade that I didn't like, right. It was a real company. The volume was really high. Um, it had like, in, I think it had investor news, right. That's stuff that I don't really like to short. So I was totally okay with just missing it. It did end up being a great fader, but it's not my niche. So I missed this move. Um, anyway, GHSI, this was a, uh, a trade I did a couple days ago. Um, by the way, is like, I, I have an air conditioner going on in the, in the background. Is it loud? Should I turn this off for everybody? Okay. Just making sure. All right. So yeah, GHSI was kind of the big mover of, of uh, yesterday or a couple days ago. Um, and the thing about this trade that I kind of fell in love with was that it was, a, it was a patent news, which historically has gotten a lot of, uh, can get a lot of hype for it, patents. Um, patent news, it had high volume. And it was what I like to call it, it was, it, it gave me this feeling, it was casually up 100% on this gap and rip over here. It was casually up 100%, just, straight up and you'll find these a lot with stocks that cross over the one dollar mark because it's easy to get up to a hundred percent but a lot of the times i notice that like people will short a stock that's up a hundred percent and they'll just short it just because it's up a hundred percent and hundred percent is a really round number that people get attracted to short so just the fact that it was casually up a hundred percent but the volume was staying really 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 high um up here on this first bounce this first dip i was really interested in buying it the problem is, is that like some gurus got involved. So I was kind of just playing the, let me get out, let me get back in game. I was pretty convicted in the idea that this was going to be the play of the day. So I was willing to get back in and this chart's a little small, but I tried to buy it up here. Um, uh, kind of like anticipating like a high bid for this stock. And 
we, you know, it tanked on me a little bit and I tried to add a little bit, but then quickly got out and I, I said, you know, let me just wait for it to find its bottom. I can always re-enter. Exactly what I did. I put the shares right back on, a quick stop out, got right back in and then added as it worked, right? Uh, Caper is a stock that I did a video lesson on. It should be coming out um, or a, it's not video lesson, uh, a trade recap on. It should be coming out uh, pretty soon, if not already. Um, but I just want to go a little bit over it. Basically, this is another example of, of a stock of, C, I think, CEI last week, where the trend is totally the key of the trade, right? Um, the stock, um, and I talked in, in a couple webinars ago, I talked about how stocks, especially on the one minute, can sometimes have really messy trends. All I define a trend by is literally just higher lows on a slightly larger time frame than I'm trading. That's the that's the um, time frame I kind of want to be paying attention to the trend on. If I'm trading the one minute, I care about the five minute trend. If I'm trading the five minute trend, I care about the 15 minute trend, right? So basically um, what I like, my rule, like my guideline for trends is when stocks respect a trend line, it typically means it's going to respect the trend break because um, if it's working for one half of the trend, it's probably going to work on the other half. So when this was holding trend all day, higher lows um, on the five minute chart, because I trade on the one minute, when it was holding five higher lows, I was waiting for a break of the higher lows. And for me, the big break was 760. It was the low of the afternoon. And at this point, I had a range break mentality. I was willing to buy it over 850, thinking that maybe if the trend holds, I want to just you know follow the trend. But if the trend breaks, I want to be there counter countering the trend with the short. Ooh. And so the next trade uh, is Codex, and this was today. So to, the first thing to note about Codex was the, the daily charts history. See these like huge, huge wicks here? These huge, huge just sell-off wicks? This really puts fear in, in the hearts of longs, right? This really puts fear in the hearts of longs because ev you know everyone sees this and says, I can't be holding on to this at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, it's always way under the opening price and it's always tanked. So I can't be holding on to this at the end of the day. So when people have that mentality of I can't be holding it, you know, everyone, anybody who is long is always looking for the sell. Anybody who is always looking, now shorts are always looking for the sell and VM long is always looking for the sell. It's definitely the edge is going to be in your favor to short it, right? So naturally, I tried to long it. <laughs> The first trade I had on this was kind of long. I was I, I was a little bit long biased in the open, and this was solely on a technical level. the The high of the day here was 180, or the high of the last the the high of the last um, big move was 180, um, and so that I was what I felt was going to be the 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 most important support slash resistance level that was going to matter. All right, so market segment. So the market this week has been um, kind of more in the middle. Like it's a little, I think, less bullish than last week. Um, started, starting to head a little bit over towards more reds, right? But we did have some good movers, right? Caper and GHSI were strong movers. And the reason why I called GHSI like kind of like a, a strong mover, like yes, it did fade off at the end of the day. But in my opinion, as far as sentiment goes, traders expect these stocks to fail at the end of the day. Traders expect piggy stocks. So the fact that the stock tanks at the end of the day, like the fact is it did run, it gathered momentum. So in, it, that's why I count GHSI as a net positive as a, on the market sentiment, as opposed to a net negative, right? As opposed to a red, because of, um, people expect it to be red. So it meets the expectation if it kind of tanks near the end of the day, right? But the fact that it soared up 200% at all was uh, made it, I guess, a positive impact on the market because maybe tomorrow people are going to be looking for the next one that can go up 200%, even though they did fade, right? And the same reason for Caper, right? Caper like did fade off, but they're expected to, you know, they meet the expectation, but the fact is they ran and they ran strong. So I count them as positives, creating good vibes, right? But other, um, this, is, uh, this is one of my, um, I guess, um, I want to say favorite things to talk about because I think it's the most important, right? The prior trade hangover is, 
a mentality of stocks where you're letting yesterday's trade affect today. And it doesn't have to be yesterday's trade. It can be five minutes ago trade. It can be last month's trade, whatever. It, it means that something about um, a prior trade is affecting your trade today, right? And um, so uh, something I like to kind of like bring up the conversation, do you care about a trade that you took six months ago? Probably not. You're well past that. Why? Because you have hit an imaginary reset button in your mind. You have let that trade go in one year, out one other. It has left your mentality. It has left your thought. It's no longer affecting your decisions today, right? So the reset button is your favorite button in this trading game, right? It's, and if you want to think about it, robots, you know, have a reset button every single second because they don't think, right? Like algos do this. The reset button needs to be your favorite button in trading, right? You need to be able to take each, each single hand, each single setup that you get with the independence that it deserves. Because um, if you, you know, like if you get aces cracked, the next time you get aces, you can't say, well, well that time my aces got cracked, so I'm just going to fold these aces. Like, how, you, can, it's, you can see it doesn't make sense with poker. It doesn't make sense with trading either. But we let these emotions kind of ride over us, right? But, and the reason why I think I call it yesterday's trade effect today, normally, like, we always seek this um, psychological reinforcement every day when we come into the market. We see the dollar sign on our P&L say 0 0.00, right? So we're fresh right? But what if it did that after every single trade? Could you psychologically think that you're on a fresh slate, right? This is what I try to do. I try to pretend that I'm on a fresh slate after each and, in, each and every single trade, right? So why do I have a picture of a stoplight? I have a picture of a stoplight because this is, every time I get in my car, I think about something really, 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 really funny that reminds me of trading. You know, when you're driving, and you're driving through, you're driving through, and you're driving up, and the stock, it's the stock, and the light is red, and you're coming up to an intersection, and the light is red, and you're looking over at the side light, and you see, oh, shut up, here. and you see that uh, that the cross, the cross light is blinking, it's about to, you know, the orange light is turning on the side road, and you know that when that light turns red, yours is going to turn green, right? And so you just keep driving right? And you keep driving, but you, you're a little off on your timing, very much like a trade. What happens right before you get to the intersection and it's still red? You pump those brakes just a little bit, don't you? You get, you, you pump those brakes just a little bit. And that is essentially like stopping out at high of day. That's stopping out at high of day. That is not having conviction that the high of day with wiggle room is going to hold, right? You know, like, you know that, that, that the light's going to turn green, yet you always, always, always pump those brakes just a little bit. That's a little bit of a stop loss, right? That's, and, and every time I do that, I'm like, I just got stopped out on a trade, right? I just got stopped out on a trade. And that's, that's me having a lack of conviction, even though I'm smart enough to know that it's going to turn green. Just because it's not, there's that fear that, like, maybe I'm a little off on my timing, like a short where I just need to just put a little stop on and then keep going, right? So that's why I have the picture of the stoplight. So conviction is a method of approaching a trade. Um, conviction, what is conviction? Conviction essentially leverages a trade. And so not every single trade I do is with conviction. Like if every trade I did with conviction, if every trade I did was with kind of conviction, like I, conviction I save for my A plus setup. So I typically have the largest size on my conviction trades. But um, I don't know, like, it's, I, I would probably just be, like, I probably need to install a bathroom in my, in my trading room. Like, I'd be peeing all the time. But basically, it's a way of approaching a trade using what I call a conviction lens when viewing price action. So having conviction means having conviction in an idea, right? The idea of a stock. And when you use conviction, right, the way I define conviction lens is, you are set on your opinion of the stock. You are set. You, you, you are really sure already. You're confident. You're convicted you, that you know what's going to happen with the stock. I'm like verifying it all looks right on my phone too. So, Yeah, Joe, you, know, you like, can move this too, right, if you want to? Yeah. Yeah, no, I've, got, I've taken over. All right, everybody's screen should change now. So what we're going to talk about is pattern, pattern and data analysis. So 
Aloha was talking about having conviction in a setup and a lot of people send messages all the time. They're like, okay, yeah, dad is great. And I'll, I'll send stuff and Aloha would be like, so you're telling me there's a chance. And the joke behind that is that, you know, data is a guide just the same as technical support and resistance, but there's nothing better that I have found that when data combined with technical support and resistance, when data supports your technical analysis, you have to have conviction. That's the difference between just slinging a gun and hoping to hit the broad side of the barn and actually having a real set risk and a real plan and a real edge in knowing that there are high odds that this works. And if you're trading a setup that only works 60% of the time and only gives you like one and a half risk reward return, throw it out. Not even worth it in my opinion. It's too, it's not even worth it. So this little abbreviation is like kind of like the WWJD thing, but this actually stands for what the hell are we doing here? So I'm going to explain to you what we're doing here. So we're going to go over the purpose of statistical analysis and probability. So we're going to define statistical probabilities of an observed market edge. So the Trump hand, I got the Trump hand going, sorry. Um, so the observed market edge first is you have to have screen time. Screen time is one of the biggest things, but as a new trader, we always struggle with screen time, right? Because when you subscribe, you're like, woo, joined MIC, here we go. I'm gonna learn all kinds of stuff. And I gotta watch the screens for another six months. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? So it, you have a veteran like Val, for example, who's had, I don't know how many years experience, I'm gonna throw a number out there and just be like 20. I might age him at that level, but sorry. Um, when you have 20 years of screen time experience, yeah, ask questions, yeah, it's fine. Um, when, we have, when you have 20 years of screen time, you've seen 20 years of all the same setups, or you've seen new setups, or you've seen pattern mutations, or you've seen small changes. You've seen all those observations, and that's the point to MIC is it's mentorship. The key is mentorship. I can't do that on screen, sorry. Uh, it's not legal here in Texas, Dr. Blunt. Um, but uh, you now, after you have all this information coming into you, develop a specific set of criteria to weed out, the no pun intended there, that was perfect timing, nice, to weed out the noise of the market. So this is when you run your scans in the morning or at night, and all of a sudden you have eight tickers that you're looking at, and you're like, okay, cool. I got a 190 level or a 210 level. On this ticker, I got a four level over here. I got a 1620 level over here. I'm gonna just put orders at all of them. Not the best idea as a beginner. Not the best idea in general, unless you're just a human robot and uh, you're like Val that can short and work for 14 positions at once. Me, I'm maxed out at like three. I really get stressed at three. So the benefits of doing this kind of analysis is you shorten your learning curve completely down to, I would tell you 90 days to six months. And you eventually grow a clear understanding of a potential outcome of a trade idea. So that's what I mean when you have conviction in this line, you know that if it hits these, your technical levels and the study supports it, it has a X percent chance of working, whatever that, that gives you conviction, that gives you faith in knowing you have an edge here without trading it for two years before you ever figure it out. So now let's take this little brief concept. Let's say that we have a proven strategy, okay, that we tested over X period of time and we have many samples for it, but if we take a specific set of rules and we teach it to one person who's never traded, knows nothing about the markets, we teach them how to click buttons, that's it. When this number goes here, 
you're out. When this goes here, you do this. You, you know nothing else about the market. If they followed that set of rules and that set of criteria, that person would be profitable and we have proven that, okay? And history repeats itself in the stock market. We see it every day in small caps. But does this individual really need to know or understand why or how this system works? Do they really need to know all the little details about it or do they just need to simply follow the rules? Should they simply just follow the rules set in place that have proven over time to be profitable or should they try to outsmart the already proven strategy? This is what happens when you come in, we tell you lines, we give you really three key strategies, which is low hanging fruit, death line and first bounce. That's like the three every day that happen. And then if you trade IPOs or big caps, you've got first red day, first red day also works on small caps as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I left my drink in the other room. Dang it. Okay, moving on. So the big difference here between pattern analysis and data analysis, a pattern, you have to have an observed market edge first. You have to have screen time. But that's why you have mentorship, right? Because you're gonna cut down the screen time. You're gonna know that this person has spent 20 years. They spent the 20 years to figure it out. These are the things that work. Don't try to outsmart them and create something that isn't there. You come to be a profitable trader. You come to learn trading. You come to learn a setup. You come to learn a strategy. Yet too many people try to reinvent the wheel. Did tell you how many questions I see about tape reading and I'm going to mention it. But how many times in chat have you seen tape reading is not important? It's not crucial. It's all about the chart. Tape read yet. Tape is the mystery. It's Bigfoot, the one everyone wants to find. It's the one thing everybody wants to learn that wants to love. And it's great, but all it does is confirm a pattern that's already there. Like, for example, Ready Player One. I don't even think that dude looks at level two. I think he just trades from his phone and he kills it. He does a great freaking job. He murders it, never looks at tape, nothing. It's all about the chart, all about the chart. So when screen time is the most crucial thing, the more observation, the better chance you have of observing a repeatable pattern with a predictable outcome. That's why you don't really have to do this because you already have the data right there from all the videos that tell you what to do and what set of rules and what set of criteria to follow. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T-O-S-H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.